morning, right here on The Source, WOCA. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Six minutes after 9 o'clock, it's time for our visit with Professor Gadget. Jim George is here to talk to us about technology, the internet, TV, cable TV, and everything in between. Everything. And good morning, Jim. How you doing? Good morning. I'm fine, fine, fine. Of course, from uh, American Cable Services. Oof, oof. Man, there's been so much outage problems and disaster with electricity. How's that going for you? And I just hooked up a gentleman yesterday. He hadn't had power since yesterday. The uh, tree tore his feeder out of the ground, you know, from the power company to him. It mm-hmm. was underground, uh-huh. but the tree roots just ripped it out. Oh, And oh, I okay. finally got it done yesterday, and the and the city came out, immediately inspected it, and the power company came and immediately hooked him up. I mean, they are doing their best, but it's up to us guys out there to, you know, to, to correct the problems, you know, electricians and such. But uh, they were very happy. They've been running the generator. He said it's about $50 a day worth of gas for really? the generator. Wow. Now we appreciate the electric companies. Yeah, yeah. So what what kind of help do you get? Uh, yeah, you're American Cable Services. You're a relatively small cable company. Right. Do you get help from the from anybody to, nope. to fix some of those problems? Nope. I do it all myself. Oh, no. Yep. So Just is everybody up and running oh, now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we're up and running. We have a couple of small problems that uh, Ocala Palms were out there yesterday, the correct one node problem, and found a power problem and fixed the problem, the power problem, and never got to the node problem. So we're going out this morning. And what's and a node problem? A node is a device that, uh, t- that takes uh, fiber in and gives you coax out. And so coax is what goes to the home okay. to supply the TV. Okay, okay. So in, in lieu of fiber to the home, this is fiber to the curb and then coax to the home. Ah, okay, okay. So it's it's intermittent. It's driving everybody crazy. It always seems to happen at the wrong time at night, you know, goes out and uh, yeah, we yeah. know where to we know what the problem is and we know where to find it. It's just time to get to it. Yeah, one one of the things that was confusing to Doug was that he had uh, his Wi-Fi was working, of course, which connects his computer to his modem. Right. Mm-hmm. But there was no internet going to the modem. Right. <laughs> right. right, exactly. So it, it was registering that he was hooked it up, but he couldn't get to the internet. So yeah. I, I, he was calling and trying to tell me, and I couldn't figure out over the phone what he was talking about. And mm-hmm. then when I went to his house, I could see that yes. all it was was connecting to the, to the modem. Right. All right, we do have the phone ringing. Let me take some of these calls. Uh, the phone lines are open, by the way, if you have a question for Jim about uh, maybe you're still down with something uh, from the storm or or maybe you've discovered something as a result of the storm or, or nothing at all to do with the storm. Jim is here to answer your questions. We'll take the first call first. Good morning. You're on the air with Jim George. Yes, good morning, all, and good morning, Mr. George. Good morning. Uh, my wife asked me to ask you if you can recharge a cell phone using a nine volt battery. Hmm. No. No. Okay. Yeah. I guess that answers the question. <laughs> yeah. There's there's no device that accepts a nine volt battery to convert it to the frequency and the uh, voltage you need for a cell phone charge. So, okay, no. well, I'll relate. Yeah, I'll relay that back to her, and uh, I think she'll be a little bit disappointed, though. Yeah, yeah. But remember, we talk all the time about those little chargers. We brought several of yeah. them in the OCA. That um, I mean, they're about the size of a of a pack of cigarettes, and you charge it up, and it takes about oh maybe an hour, an hour and a half to charge it, and then it'll charge your cell phone four complete times. Yeah. I guess she was charging her her, her, her her cell phone there in the in my car, plugging it in to my car. Yeah, well, there's still a there's still a a converter of sorts. In other words, that 12 volts from your car is uh, going to the the plug that plugs into your cell phone, and it has a certain pin that it's it's activating. And uh, you and I don't know what those pins are. Now, maybe Verizon might know what those pins are or somebody, but do you really want to have a rig where you use a 9-volt battery? I mean, just either plug it into your car or plug it into the house if you have power or get a backup. I mean, some things are not worth reinventing. 
Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Yep. He reminded me, did you happen to see the video on the internet, on YouTube, whatever, uh, these kids down in, uh, I think in the Keys or somewhere where they lost power, the, the, the father videotaped them using uh, potatoes to light light bulbs? Really? Yeah. Isn't they were using the chemical like, reaction of light, yeah. They learned about cool. it in school, and they had no lights, and they said, well, hold on, we don't have a flash up, but here we got, because the, the father was using his phone, I guess, as a light, and they said, well, we can do it with, with potatoes. And the fa- you can hear the father laughing and the thing. Oh, you guys are geniuses! <laughs> oh, come on, Dad. We learned it in school. You can hear the kids. Uh, they're yeah. just having a blast with Lone that. Aluminum foil, different. the acid from the potato, all all of the above. Yeah, that's one for Jim and the Ham Club. That's what they would probably uh, like to distribute. And how many of us didn't even think of that? Because I remember hearing about that when, gosh, when I was a kid too. But I don't. I mean, who? I didn't even think of getting a potato to light a light. I don't even know that I would know how to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, it, you, I guess you'd have to see the video for sure, Doug. How, <laughs> how do you light a light bulb with a potato? All right, let's go back to the telephone. Good morning. You're on the air with Jim George. Good morning, Larry, Robin, and Jim. Good morning. Yeah, I just wanted uh, to say to you about um, instead of putting the cable uh, into the ground. Um, I just want to find out uh, if I could call Cox or, or something. They could put a satellite up there instead of uh, wasting the wire. Okay, is this for electric, Doug, or is this for your internet? For the internet. Well, they already have satellite deliverable internet right now. Uh, there are several companies that do it. Uh, Hughes works with Dish and with and another company. I forget its name. Starts with an E that works with uh, Direct. And then there's the independent called Blue Yonder or or Bright Blue or uh, Big Blue. Anyway, it's a company that um, that that you put up a dish and you can get your internet from the satellite. Uh, okay. How about uh, let's say. Instead of with a ditch uh, or or a satellite, whatever, uh, do they ever have anything up there uh, to get just the signal only? Yeah, just the signal. There's just they'll just give you the connectivity to the internet, and after that, you you go wherever you normally surf. So I, I guess the idea, like like the uh, legislators were talking about burying the electric cable. Yes. You, you talked about this last week. Yes. Uh, so now they're talking about it. They're also trying to figure out a way to prevent another gas shortage, gasoline shortage. Right. Um, so they'll make some kind of legislation, I guess, that will be. In reference to us evacuating, et cetera. Um, and, and I guess what Doug is trying to say is instead of burying the cable, because cable is buried, mm-hmm. but yet we still lost cable. Well, that's because the feeder line that fed your underground was on the pole. It's up on a pole, okay. Yeah, okay. if everything was underground, you wouldn't have that problem, except if there was a flood. Um, I was watching a uh, video yesterday about um, the, p- the two power plants in in uh, Japan, nuclear power plants that both failed. And they both failed because the backup generators were in the basement. Oh, So so think about it. Oh, my god! A tsunami came, wiped out, took the power out. Yeah. The generators can't kick on. They're in the basement. Oh, wow. And they were giving you a whole whole list of lessons learned. Yes. Why would you put the, you know, so now they're taking these huge generators. I mean, this generator wouldn't fit inside WOCA's building. That's how big they are. Wow. And they're going to put them on the roof, of course. (laughs) You know, get them up high. Yeah. (laughs) And we do have another phone. 30-foot tall tsunami. Wow. Wow. Good morning. Oh my goodness. Good morning. You're on the air with Jim. Uh, good morning, Jim. This is yes. Sonny calling. Yes, sir. With the uh, transmission lines and everything else that you, they're talking about, uh, we're talking at uh, voltages, very high voltages running through those transmission lines. Yes. Now, they can be buried. Uh, I work for a utility upstate New York where they had some of this stuff buried. But the insulation required for that and the construction of the cable, etc., is just astronomical. 
and then the cost of burying it is almost like 10 times the amount that would be to run it on those towers. Yes. So, you know, uh, yeah, it can be done, but at what cost? And I think the cost would be just uh, prohibitive as far as uh, doing something like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, it'd be very high. But there again, if they took a section at a time, you know, just assume they took the uh, um, a certain section of Ocala and said it's going to take us to two years and we're going to put everything underground. And then the next two years, they do another section. And, uh, you know, they put that in their budget. Yeah, but you're talking about voltages like 600 kV. Uh, you know, I know the voltages we worked at were uh, 180 and uh, 345 uh, kVA. And yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, the well, requirements to put that in is, uh, you know, the, the cable is pulled in at uh, this pipe. And the pipe is filled with uh, liquid insulating oil. Oh, yes. Well, think and about New York City, Sonny, and Denver, Colorado, downtown. They're all underground. Everything is underground. Yeah, but at that kind of voltage, 345,000 volts? Well, no. But see, the high-tension lines, you know, the ones that are up 50, 60, 70 feet in the air with the big uh, girders and everything, those are not necessarily affected by even a hurricane. What's affected is the, the, the tree level ones where the tree Oh yeah, have, well New know. York City New York City has that all on the ground. Yes. For example, and a lot of other uh, cities. Yes. But that still doesn't preclude uh, well, what happens in New York with the snow and ice, they use salt. Salt yeah. and electricity don't get along no, too they well. Do, they do not. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, you know, there's uh, pros and cons to everything and you have to weigh all that. Yep. And the biggest uh, con on burying this stuff is the uh, cost. It costs like oh, uh, easily ten times more to to bury this stuff. Plus the cable requirements and insulation requirements are like quadruple, if not more. Yes, it's so expensive. Anyway, that's uh, one reason why they, you see these towers, and I don't think they're going to go away. Now, the high-tension lines will remain. It's just the feeders. They need to bury the feeders. Yeah, well, well high-tension lines go from, like, a generating uh, step, a, a substation outside a generating station that steps up the voltage so it can be transmitted long distances. Yes. And then you need another substation to drop it down. Yes. To uh, normal high voltage and then more substations to drop it down to the kind of voltages and currents that we use, uh, you know, in our homes yes. and uh, f factories and whatever. It's uh, kind of a complicated thing. Yes, it is. Thank you for calling. All right, thank you. All right, let's uh, take a little break, and we will be right back with Jim George after this. No, I cannot believe the weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. A mix of sun and clouds on this Friday with a shower or thunderstorm in spots this afternoon, high 84 to 88. Partly cloudy Friday night with a shower or thunderstorm, low 72 to 76. Times of sun and clouds and rather breezy Saturday with a shower and thunderstorm or two, high 84 to 88. And on Sunday, clouds and some sun with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm, high 85 to 89. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. What do I do now? After 911. Don't worry, call for Curry. For Curry Medical and Chiropractic, treating auto injuries for over 32 years. Same day appointments, immediate medical attention, all under one roof. Don't worry, call for Curry. Go to bestinjurycare.com. All auto insurances are accepted. Available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to take your call. Car accident? Don't worry, call for Curry. Bestinjurycare.com. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. Keep this tip in mind. Alcohol does not make you a better conversationalist. Lie on the floor and look at your belly. When you lie down, gravity is going to push the surface flab to one side. What's left protruding on top is the scary stuff. Okay, intelligent people, would you like an easy way to size somebody up? Just check out the pictures on their desk. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. This is the beat of a normal heart. 
Now this is the beat of a heart of someone who just snorted or injected or smoked methamphetamine. Why? For a high. And this is what happens to that normal heartbeat. It's irregular. It's racing. It's why it's called speed. And it can do bizarre things to our heads. It can make us aggressive and violent. We can start hallucinating and end up doing some serious damage to people. Call 1-888-8-NO-METH today for more information on methamphetamine. That's 1-888-8-NO-METH. A message from the Partnership for a Drug-Free Florida and America. Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA The Source every night from 2 to 6 a.m. and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep. And neither do we. So we're here with you live from 2 till 6 a.m. every weekday. Call us 866-90-RED-EYE. So join me, Gary McNamara. And me, Eric Harley, every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment. Right here on WOCA The Source. On top of the world, Ocala's premier active adult community is a leader in the industry in both recreational activities and amenities. They utilize superior construction methods to deliver energy-efficient homes. Tune in Wednesday at 9 a.m. Robert Colin with On Top of the World will be our guest to discuss all the exciting new things On Top of the World can offer to current and prospective new residents. So be sure to tune in Wednesday at 9 a.m. On Top of the World. You deserve the world. All right, 22 minutes after 9 o'clock. Jim George is here from American Cable Services and uh, kind of uh, focused a little bit today on uh, what we could do to perhaps uh, end the, the the electric going out when you have a storm situation. Although I don't know, you can ever do that. No, but you can, you know, de- definitely, Completely. Uh, you know, lower it down. Like I think I've told you, the city of Ocala's fiber optic system, uh, they chose a special fiber optic system that has a Teflor, Keflar. Um, uh, strand relief built into it. So what that is is if you've ever seen the, uh, the the Kevlar, you literally can't cut it, you can't break it, you can't do anything. So really? uh, when the power pole snaps from the wind, let's say a tree, and the uh, power is out, the only thing holding that power, that telephone pole part on, on top, is is the fiber. The fiber is still holding it up. Oh my gosh! Because of that, you know, strand. Wow. So um, they're, they're hardly ever ever out. But I noticed that this hurricane season, they were out along Martin Luther King for like one day, and that's because the number of trees that came down were just too much weight even for that Kevlar to hold it up. Uh, but they got it back up in 24 hours. So. It, this and you know the the city could design um, underground infrastructure and better aerial, but it will cost. Like Sunny was saying, you got to weigh the cost. Right. So I want to ask you about the cost. Um, tomorrow, FEMA is going to meet with people at the library. Obviously, you don't need to go there. You can go on phone or online. But I was just cu- curious. Okay, so we as individuals, we can perhaps get some financial help if our house had a tree mm-hmm. fall onto it or something. Mm-hmm. What about you as a cable company? You had to go through extra expense to fix everything that was broken. Can you? I can. You yeah. can, okay, you I can, can get, apply. I'm just not going to. You're just going to. No, use. it's a, uh, it's you know, you always have to ask yourself lessons learned. Like, uh, you know, we boarded our house I, uh, with uh, plywood. Uh, only one neighbor in my entire neighborhood did the same thing. Do we have any window damage? No, none. But what if a limb had it had have hit the house? Right. What if I did right. lose a, you know windows? Windows are expensive, yeah. yeah. Especially if it damages the frame, and you're not just replacing the glass now; you're replacing the frame, and the frames in the in the stucco, and you got to rest, you know. So we just took you know, the precaution, but a lot of people did not. So um, you have to ask yourself lessons learned. Like you guys lost power. Uh, for a short time, right? You know right, what? Right. What lesson? You know, can we correct that next time around? Potatoes. That's my answer. I mean, this <laughs> nuclear power plant in in Japan. I mean, the generators in the basement. As soon as they realized, <laughs> yeah. what, and all the controls were in the basement to let the to vent the steam from the the uh, nuclear rods that oh, were over. No. Everything was in the basement. Oh yeah. no! They couldn't get to the basement. No, no, no they mm-hmm. weren't thinking. So, no. so they they've definitely learned. There. So they're tearing the whole darn thing down. They're they're moving the rods over to different areas that you know for for storage, and then they're rebuilding the nuclear power plant at a huge expense. Of course, Japan's got plenty of our money. Of course. So, <laughs> <laughs> but now what they've learned is they're going to move the power plant sufficiently back up on the hill. They're going to build the hill way up. 
um, be, uh, you know, above the power plant, and they're going to put the generators high up in a, mm-hmm. in a hardened facility, and that and that will never happen again. Right. So exactly. I think you talked about wireless charging once before, but there was a story in the news today. Apple will release the iPhone 8 and iPhone 8 Plus, which are the two latest models of their smartphone. And the new devices include an all-glass body and support for wireless charging. Okay. Now, I think you told us about wireless charging. Yes, yes. Your guy Matt that comes on and talks about, you know, from the Verizon store. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the the cell phones he sold my wife and daughter and. Uh, uh, I, I didn't buy one. I got a cheap ass phone. But um, <laughs> <laughs> you just set it on top of the charger. You don't plug it in. So it's not like wireless, as in through the airwaves. Well, it is through the through the airwaves, and then one sense. I mean, it, could I put a piece of paper between it? Could I, uh, you know, make a gap of a half inch or so? Probably could. But oh, okay. the idea, the closer the proximity, the faster the charging. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. could you do more than one at a time? It, it depends what the charger is designed for. In other words, yeah. I have a charger that charges uh, my cell, my uh, my uh, drill batteries and my uh, uh, flashlight batteries, and you know it, it'll do two at a time instead of one at a time. I I bought it that way. You have a phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Jim. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I expected some kind of electromagnetic coupling. Um, um, you know, sort of like. Uh, 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 an, an air core transformer. Yeah, induction of some sort. Yeah. 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 Yep, but yeah. it works. I mean, um, it's over my head. But but it's slow. I tell you, my wife can put it on there all night, and the next morning it'd be like three quarters charged. I can plug mine in with a hard wire, and in oh. one hour it's done. Oh wow. Yeah. So I wonder what would have happened. Like they said about rationing the gasoline. Um, for the next evacuation, what would happen if everybody had electric cars? <laughs> and there's no electricity. What then? Yeah. What are we doing? Yeah, now exactly. we're stuck. How does See, that work? There you work? go again. Uh, you know what lessons yeah. have we learned from yeah. from this hurricane? Exactly. First of all, leave early. <laughs> yeah, leave very early. Right. Yeah. yeah. Next lesson: arrive late. Make sure you have enough money on your debit or credit card yeah. so that you can get a room in Atlanta or someplace yes, far away. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And yes. take out a lot of cash. Yeah. Take out a lot of cash. <laughs> <laughs> No, we, 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 we should all learn every day something new. I mean, I, if you don't learn something new every day, you're actually going backwards instead of just staying, you know, stable. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you have to ask yourself, what have I learned from this hurricane, you know? Um, I have neighbors that have actually taken some trees and pushed them down now. Even the, the hurricane didn't knock them down. They took them down. Uh-huh. Oh, really? Well, They're not going to have this go through again. They'll forget it. It may be somebody else's tree that knocks the power out, but it's not going to be theirs. They're, yeah. They're taking them down. You know down. what I learned today? I learned that if somebody's asking for Mr. Good Bar, it might not be what I think it is. Oh, boy. <laughs> it yeah. might not be what I think it is. That's right. It might not be that chocolatey nutty bar. Yeah. Right. Never get out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Almond joy. Yeah. Uh, uh, sometimes you feel like a nut. Yes, yeah, sometimes you do. Uh, all right. Hey, so if we, if we balls of fire. Yeah. <laughs> if we want to call hot. you, what do we? Uh, what number do we use? Sure, eight five four nine. 97.95. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, Ocala. Thank you. We'll be right back. Here is your 30-second news brief. FEMA will be at the Marion County Public Library headquarters tomorrow to assist residents that suffer damage from Hurricane Irma. A 40-year-old Ocala man is facing molestation charges after a 15-year-old girl said he performed lewd acts on her in Lake County. The Ocala Regional Medical Center employee attacked last year while treating a bank robbery suspect is suing the Ocala Police Department and a contest is offering a night in Cinderella Suite in the Cinderella Castle at Disney World. And that is your...